Agent Productions presents White Devil Podcast. Welcome to White Devil Podcast, episode 23, and I'm here with Retro Kaiser. Yep. <laughs> yes. I had something. I wanted to say something important there, but for some reason it just morphed into. Yep. I, was, I wanted to do a Wilkes impersonation, but that <laughs> didn't work. Uh, you could just say, uh, <clears throat> "I got this really big thumper," and we'll we'll call it. <laughs> well, I can I can imp- I can impersonate how Wilkes currently is in the Let's Play. Ready? Yep. Yeah, he's silent because he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, hey, welcome to this uh, very special kind of impromptu-style uh, White Devil podcast. Uh, we'll be joined by other people later in the evening. Uh, in the evening for Kaiser, it's actually afternoon for me, as we're recording this. And n- no, there will not be match game. There will not be Q&A. This is just going to be general chit-chat today, basically. It's going to be a much more looser White Devil podcast than usual, and I decided we it would be nice to kind of round out the year with this because, as people might have noticed, we haven't done a lot of podcasts this year. <laughs> nope, 2016's been a very dark year. Yeah, a big reason for that, as if people hadn't guessed, uh, one was the fact that, of course, I had to move uh, away to the, to get to the job that I'm uh, currently at, and we also had... Um, we also had some kind of bad luck with, uh, well, Dorovka had, of course, had to go away for a couple of months uh, to get uh, some treatment uh, for his depression, which is really good. And he's now back and he's, we're doing the Let's Play together. It's really nice. Uh, I, it's okay to say that because, you know, uh, we he's talked about it in the Let's Plays and everything. But uh, going back, um, Kaiser, you've been on two of the podcasts this year, the three before we did this one. <laughs> Or the perils of video making and the Disney TV cartoons. Yes, and I'm, and I sort of regret not saying enough in both those episodes. Oh yeah, the problem is, and what part of the reason why we're doing this little opening segment with Kaiser is that it's going to be super late for him when we actually have the rest of the people over here. So while he's still somewhat lucid, <laughs> it's it would be going nice. to be super late. It's pretty darn late now. It's a, it's like midnight. Uh, no, it's two minutes to midnight as we're doing this conversation right now. Nice. <laughs> oh man, do you think we should do another heavy metal podcast, or do we think? Do you think we've milked the metal teat for all it's worth? <laughs> we still need to get around to doing that new metal podcast, honestly. I don't think I have a lot to say about new metal. I mean, I like it. Uh, just fine, you know, occasionally, but it's like, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I have a lot to say about that. But, uh, hey, just go, going back to, the only podcast that you weren't a part of this year was the Mr. Weenie Catches Up cast, and that was the big reason for that. Uh, you were on the Mega Man cast 2.0 from last year, where John, Mr. Weenie, was supposed to be on originally, mm-hmm. but John, of course, had to leave uh, just as we were starting the recording, so... We had a little bad luck with that, but uh, well, do you do you have any thoughts about that? Do you remember the podcast at all? I mean, we just talked about Mega Man mostly. <laughs> Appropriate. <laughs> this has been one of those years where I've been way, way too busy on my own work to catch up with other people's work. Yeah, I, I get that. So, and he's he's being serious about that. Like Kaiser, Kaiser's one of the busiest YouTubers I know. So, yeah. Uh, the fact that we're able to even steal even a little bit of time like this to do the podcast, to do the Let's Plays, like, it just means the world to, world to me because I realize just how fucking busy he is, so... Heck, uh, I was... When he popped up on Skype, I was already in the process of recording reviews. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, oh, but, speaking but of I busy... Think, I, think, I think we can still, like, uh, b- bounce off that, Mr. Weeniecast, because just before, just before we started recording... Uh, you were experiencing Mighty Number no. Nine a little bit for yourself again, mm. and uh, what are, what are your thoughts on that game based on your very l- short amount that you played about played on it? Feels like a very decent Mega Man game. Feels with ugh, feels like a very decent Mega Man game with some neat new twist added in there. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of 
my, what I sum up, I, I mean, I understand there's just been whole outrage over the thing and, you know, the Kickstarter, how it took so long to come out and the horrible advertisements and everything. But, but when you look past... Not, the, to, mention, not, to, mention, not yeah. to mention how much money they actually made for it and how it ended up looking like a, a bit of a PS2 game. Well, that's, that's um, another topic. But, but looking past, like, all the outrage and stuff and... Once I got to play it, because this year I also got got myself uh, an Xbox One, uh, I, I, I decided, okay, I want to try out Mighty Number no. 9. I, I don't care what anybody says, because i kind of been expecting this heavily, and I loved it. I thought it was a really good Mega Man game. I liked it better than Mega Man 10 and Mega Man 9. And I understand, of course, the outrage that you know people might have for such an expected, highly expected game, but at the same time, you gotta kind of put a little bit of reality into it. It's a Mega Man game, basically. So, and for that, it's not a, it's not bad at all. And as for the graphics, you know, what you said about the fact that it looked like a PlayStation Two game. I mean, it's supposed to be cartoony, right? I mean, I'm not. Am I? Am I? Am I missing something uh, <sighs> with that? Or do you disagree? <laughs> it's meant. It's meant to. It's meant to look cartoony, but a part of me also looks like it looks a little bit too low res for me. <laughs> well, that's oh, low. Low, low res. Well, I know, I know, I'm an outlier on this, but like for friggin', I don't fucking honestly, I do high definition. What you call it? I don't fucking care. Like if, if the game, if I can, if the, what the graphics look like is honestly the least important part. Like, what the only thing I care about, am I having fun when I'm playing it? Yes. And I've had a lot of fun with Mighty Number no. 9. I, I've enjoyed it a lot, and I've even learned the ins and outs of it much better than, let's say, Mega Man 9 or 10, because I actually, for comparison's sake, I just recently even, like, played 9 and 10 just to remind myself, am I just, like, looking at this through, through uh, rose-tinted glasses, or am I? Do I legitimately feel this way? And yes, I have a lot of trouble getting back into nine and ten. Like nine is a good game. Don't get me wrong; it's super fucking hard. Yes, but it's a good game <laughs> still. Uh, but ten, yeah, no, no, ten is is ten is still garbage. You know, <laughs> even even after I, you know. <laughs> here's the thing, honey. I actually um pl- somehow got a copy of Mega Man Ten this year, and I played it just to see. Just to test you out, just to see what, well, just to see if um if it's as bad as what you said it was. Yep. I actually quite enjoy it. Okay. How how did you feel about Nine when it came out? I thought it was interesting that they somehow went back to the old old ones, but a part of me felt really weird that there's also a, like they go straight back that they went straight back to the old graphics, and yet Seven and Eight have still have like the um Super Nintendo graphics. It feels just a bit like um, Super Nintendo PlayStation. Yeah, I, I bring that up specifically. Like, do, did you feel like you didn't really enjoy Nine, and by comparison, you thought Ten was better? Oh no, I enjoyed Nine, but I but I don't. I also don't think that Mega Man Ten was garbage, as you said. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's like you know, and the, it is definitely like the kind of thing where when I was playing it again, I, I started to b- find more things I liked about it. Like, honestly, I like Sheep Man's level. That's, that's pretty much my favorite part of the whole game. And that's Sheep the Man, one with the so- That's yeah. the one with the soccer balls, isn't it? The sports theme level. No, Sheep Man. <laughs> that's the electric level. <laughs> Are you talking about George Man? <laughs> or Ball yes. Man? Or Baseball Man? Or the million other fucking things we Ball called man. it in the Aqualon cartoon? <laughs> sports Man. Sports Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate it. You know, but you know what? My least favorite boss in that game was Blade Man. Like he looks so fucking dumb. <laughs> it looks like it I agree looks with that like one. Three butter knives, uh, you know, glued together. <laughs> yeah, probably just as blunt as one too. Yeah, <laughs> but Ooh, but, okay. But, uh, my complaint about Mega Man Ten though was, um, while I did like it, I found that the levels in this one were a bit long. Yeah, long and really hard unless you played it with the easy difficulty, which was a total... That's the thing that I really didn't like. I, I kind of like the idea that they would have like alternating difficulty levels, a la Mega Man 2. Of course, that only applies for the Western version. But still, you know, lots of people like Mega Man 2 specifically because you can choose the normal slash easy mode. And the game, it's still challenging, 
but it's still like you know it feels mm-hmm. it's, it feels like a real game uh whereas in Mega Man 10 did you play the easy mode in 10 yes i did i did feels a little bit insulting yeah they put like freaking friggin platforms to block out all the holes you can fall in and mm-hmm. all that that there's in every level at the end of every level they have that power up from Mega Man 1 that fills up your life and your master weapons and it's like come, come the fuck on <laughs> like mm-hmm. <laughs> It's, no, it's like, it's like we're not I, I children was, here. But but you know, it's hard for you. To, it's it's maybe hard for you to get into the same mindset as I had because I was I was really skeptical about ten when it came out, and then when I started playing it, and I first thought, okay, this is cool. I can play as Proto Man. I can slide again, and then I realized like Proto Man is weak as shit. Like literally four hits from a met will kill Proto Man as opposed to Mega Man. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Like he has the weak. He has. So, it's so so so. First of all, getting energy for Proto Man is much more of a priority. Uh, you will die a lot. That's more. Yeah. that's weird. I would have thought he'd be more defensive because he's got that shield. Well, the shield is when you jump. The shield does block projectiles, but good luck learning the timing of every fucking enemy that shoots projectiles. And so, in a way that it's useful, like there's. I use it more on accident when I play as Proto Man, and that was the thing. Like, mm-hmm. combine that with the high difficulty, uh, and I got so. I, I mean, I did get all the way into I think the third Wily level, and then I just I ran. I think I ran out of energy tanks, and I was stuck. And I thought, like, fuck it, I'm just gonna blaze through it with the easy mode just to see the ending, which was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I, I, mean, I, I, I didn't get that I far might, into I the might game. Be like, I might might have had like a very like strong knee jerk reaction, but I, honestly, it's just I just don't find myself coming back to it as much. And you know, I was replaying it again once I'd done all the levels that I kind of liked about Mega Man Ten, which there aren't a lot of, you know. It was then like, yeah, yeah, this is, now this is like drinking tar for me. Like, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just I'm just drudging, picturing just oil man along. from him. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, that's a, that's a Finnish saying that might not make sense. But yeah, we say to drink tar when it feels like it's, uh, what, what, what would be, um, it, it's like something that is terrible to do and you have to do it. And it's like, takes a long time. There's a, there must be some other idiom for that. <laughs> yeah. To drink to eat shit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Okay. I'll probably think of it at some point. But yeah, I like to nine way. Like, how about? Yeah. Yep. Was it was it like sitting on a bed of nails? Would be better. Maybe that's that, that gets pretty close. <laughs> but yeah, I loved I loved Mighty Number no. Nine and um, yeah, I love the bus. And they, that's another thing we were when we were streaming it. I, like I pointed out, there's like two two of the eight initial bosses are women. As opposed to none in ten, you know they had Splash Women in nine, which was you know nice and also an easy fodder for Dirty which Man. I think art. I called Mermaid Man in a um let's play. Or you know Merman, <laughs> <laughs> Mermaid Man. <laughs> Sorry, that was my Merman impersonation. <laughs> yeah, you know they were originally going to have uh, Hornet Man was originally go- going to be a woman. They were going to have Bee Woman or Hornet Woman. And then they change it, and I think like it would have been cool if they just would have kept two female bosses in that. Not that I don't like Hornet Man. Actually, Hornet Man was really funny. And when we did the, again, sorry to make this about me, but when we when we did the <laughs> Aqualon cartoon, I think Hornet Man was my favorite voice to do because I did my creepy Peter Laurie voice for him. <laughs> I'm talking to this lady. What's your problem, eh, big man? <laughs> you wanna fight? I'm st- I kill I'm st- you. I fucking kill you. <laughs> I'm still upset that there's still no Origami Man and Mega Man. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, uh, do you still have something to say about Mega Man, or should we kind of move along uh, to the other podcast? Uh, yes. Today? I was about to ask, what was the ending in Mega Man 10? You uh, can yeah. cut it out. <laughs> okay, spoiler alert for it. everybody. Uh, is that you fight Wily, and then Wily collapses at the end, and you Mega Man realizes that... Wily is deathly ill, so he grabs Wily. They teleport out of the space station. Uh, that, yeah, the final ha- battle happens on a place, uh, PlayStation. <laughs> space station. <laughs> and then uh, it shows, I think, like, you know, one week later or one month later, and it's Wily's uh, hospital room, and Wily's flown the coop. Uh, so the his window is open and uh, it shows like the the, the curtains flap, fluttering and he's left behind a whole mountain of medicinal pills 
for the if you remember what the central premise of Mega Man Ten, it's Roboenza. <laughs> And before, and before the Wily levels, like, Roll gets it. Roll gets Roboenza, and she has one of the cure pellets. She gives it to Mega Man so she won't, uh, so he won't contract it. And then... What is what is this? The uh, Mega Man version of Batman Arkham City? What? Uh, you haven't played Batman Arkham City? Yes, I played You know, it. Yes, Joker's played. terrible STD gives Batman. Oh. <laughs> no, you mean the Titan uh, virus, <laughs> or he poisons yeah. he poisons Batman's blood? Yeah, I get it, I get it. <laughs> no, but Mega Man gets cured. Mega Man gets cured, but Roll is in danger of uh, dying from Roboenza. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the thing we made fun of in the fucking fucking Aqualon cartoon as well. But that's you know what? <laughs> that sounds like a very terrible season two episode of Mega Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, bruh, oh, I, mean, I mean, it's sort of, I guess it's sort of touching, like, Wily, you know, because Mega Man saves Wily, and Wily, like, repays him with the Roboenza cure, but it's like, you know, it's just one still image at the end of the game, and it's, well, not still, like, like I said, you can see, I remember the the curtain fluttering, but it's, it's still like, yeah, like, you know, it, it's a dumb, you know, the game's plot is dumb enough, and then it's like, you know, it, the ending doesn't, like, redeem it too much. A little bit, maybe, but not too much. <laughs> Just one quick question. How did you feel in Mega Man 9 when Chun-Li was the news reporter in the intro? I noticed that. I, I guess I chuckled a bit. I didn't I didn't really uh, think about it too much. I mean, I get it. It's, uh, I, I, I always like it that Capcom still, like, sort of um, makes these little tongue-in-cheek references to the Street Fighter movie. Like, you know, it does make me feel nice about, about it. <clears throat> Because, you know, people people still tend to bitch and complain so much about the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, even though it's really enjoyable. <laughs> it's it's stupid fun. That's what the movie is. Yeah. <laughs> the, game, the game based on the movie, though, was terrible. Well, uh, the thing I hear is that the people didn't like the arcade version, but that the home versions were actually sort of decent. I don't know. Oh, I, I haven't okay. played it. I, I, I've played the arcade version. It just felt it just felt like um, Street Fighter, Street Fighter done in Mortal Kombat style, but not as well. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like the I think the most impressive thing is that they got like the actors, all of them except Raul Julia, because he was already like so ill, like he couldn't he couldn't do any any of the uh, cinema. He didn't couldn't do any of the video capture for the uh, character models. Oh man, <laughs> that was depressing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. So hey, anything more we want to talk about Mega Man? Should we kind of move on, move along, or we should move on, move, yes. move along. Let's. Okay, so Mega next... Mega out of here. <laughs> okay, and uh, so the next podcast that we had after the Mr. Weenie cast, where we also talked about Mr. Weenie. By the way, was actually he helped fund the Kickstarter as well. So that was kind of an interesting thing that was revealed as the podcast went on. But um. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> well, he had a, he had a good. He, he, I mean, he had a. He had a good sense of humor about the thing, so you know. But I, I know a lot of people didn't. But uh, I remember. Was... Okay, sorry. I remember. If you remember, I remember. If you remember, I pre-ordered Mighty Number no. Nine like a good year before it came out because I thought it was going to come out that year, yeah. only for it to get delayed and delayed. Oh, yeah. <sighs> and, oh, yeah. And you know, K- KG Inafune has, you know, at every venue possible, he's already apologized for it and all the other mistakes he made, but. Moving on, we all then had yep. episode podcast number twenty one, which was the perils of video making, uh, where we talked about uh, video length issues, uh, movie reviews, copyright issues, and a bunch of other stuff. Editing flops. I don't really mm-hmm. remember that. You got any more n- new issues you want to add on since then? No, I, I, one thing that I kind of never really got through. Like we talked a little bit about the monetization issue and. Uh, 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 you, you take Patreon. Were you are you also monetized on YouTube? I am not monetized on YouTube because I because I because I feel like because I don't own the rights to the games that I review. Okay. I don't feel like that I should take monetization. Okay, but yeah. yes, this is sort of the year where I've been, where I've been a little bit hypocritical because I remember trashing Mighty Number no. Nine back a while back, and now I'm enjoying it. Now and I also remember saying I would not, I do not accept Patreon, and now I do. So. <laughs> Times yes, change, and I've my also, friend. And, 
I, I've, I've also donated a little bit on, for Kaiser as well, so that, there's that. Um, but uh, the thing I wanted to, we talked a little bit about monetization, and it's it's a topic that's sprung up from other sources previous, just recently as well. And here's the thing I need to, I guess I didn't make it clear enough back in back when we did that this podcast. Like I said, for, I said that for me, it's always been a principal thing that uh, uh, that I don't monetize my videos, and I don't think I, I just try not to think about like making money on youtube because that's the that's the i don't want to get into that trap where it's the becomes the thing that occupies my life but another thing i I should have what i should have basically just said at the start like i've been doing youtube since 2006 you know today this year Mm -hmm. i had my 10th anniversary i made the whole video about it and people don't i don't i don't think people even remember back in 2006 youtube monetization didn't exist so, no, it did not. Yes, there might and, be. There, and, might and have been, our... there might have been like sponsorship deals for some channels, possibly, mm-hmm. but it was like very small scale. Then a year from that, maybe two years, is when monetization finally happened. And at first, you, you couldn't even do it in Finland. Like it wasn't even a thing that was available in some uh, in most parts of the world. But that's the thing. Like I've been doing YouTube, you know, uh, without you know the in- incentive of monetary returns. From the very beginning, so for me, it's just not a thing I really even think about. Oh yeah, I know that feeling. If I did, if I opened up my YouTube channel just for that reason, I would have quit a long time ago. Because, <laughs> because my friend, I am, I am too. I've also been on YouTube for over ten years now. Nice. All right. <laughs> Granted, it took me nine of those ten years to actually, you know, make good videos. <laughs> I kind of feel a little bit like that, like uh, for my pre twenty twelve videos. Well, except for some of the cartoons, like some of the cartoons, um, <laughs> you know, it's really funny, like, I don't know, did you ever watch the, sorry, I'm talking about my fucking cartoons again, <laughs> 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 uh, this, they're turning into Hanu cartoon cast again. Ugh, but, you Those know, are good you, cartoons, I really enjoy them. Okay, did you, did you ever sit down and watch the entirety of the Metal Poop shit saga that I made back in the day, which was my Metal, Metal Gear Solid parody? No, I mainly watched the Mega Man ones. You've watched the Mega Man ones. Okay. Well, in the early Mega Man ones... Oh, no! I think I did even... I think I did watch it. Oh, there you go on. You go on. Yeah, well, the, <sighs> you, one thing you will notice... Did you notice, like, in the very early ones in the Mega Man cartoons, how there tended to be kind of long pauses when the characters talked, and, you know, there was kind of this very... Yes, late... especially with Pharaoh Man. A what? Pharaoh Man. Especially with Pharaoh Man. Well, eh, Pharaoh Man, not so much, but yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, like, I think right up to uh, Mega Man cartoon numbers, well, the, the the bar cartoon, I think right up to that point, I was still ad-libbing all of my cartoons. So there were no scripts, is what I'm saying. And in the Metal Poop Shit series, what happened was first three cartoons were ad-libbed, and then the fourth one was the first time I tried with a script, and I did five with a script, and then six, I reverted back to not using a script because at the time I felt like the cartoons I did with a script weren't funny, weren't just funny enough because they weren't like spontaneous, uh, as spontaneous and things. But this year, mm-hmm. I kind of looked back on some of the Metal Poop shit cartoons, and I'm and I was so I know I was a little shocked. I looked at the older ones, and the ones that I always w- were so proud of, the first three Metal Poop shit cartoons, and I thought to myself. Man, these aren't really very good at all. <laughs> Would you say that they are quite metal poop shit? I mean, some of the jokes are still funny. Like, I, I still, I still like, I still chuckle, chuckle at the g- gags and things. Like, I thought to myself, like, man, I used to do a lot of like toilet humor. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, but the funny thing is, like, now honestly, the thing that I used to so value, which was that very natural pace, and also kind of that awkward pace when, like. Uh, solid shit who was like uh, solid snake in the in the cartoon <laughs> like he would have the freaking you just what 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 you, you know uh, you know he would he would kind of like stumble with his words a little bit like that's mm-hmm. the thing I used to be like really proud of like I could have those like very legitimate moments and felt more like more felt more ad libby but then I look back at the fourth cartoon which I used to not like at all because that was the one where I had a script and I felt like I was just I, I could tell that I was reading a script so that was the thing that bothered me and I looked back on it and I thought like 
actually, this holds up much better because all the characters are talking when they're supposed to be talking <laughs> and things like that. So I don't know. I've had a complete 180 from what I used to think about my like my old cartoons in that regard. Sorry. Now it's... <laughs> We were talking about the perils of video making. Is there some peril of video making that you've heard yes. this year? Yeah. Well, here's something that might actually surprise you about my reviews. Something that I kept deep, dark, and hidden because no, no reviewer should have to admit this. All of my reviews are also ad libbed. I don't have a script in front of me. <laughs> Granted, it's not like it's not like I just go. It's not like I just burst out the first thing that comes to mind. No, I have a good long finger think a good long thing about what I'm going to say you know so I guess I do have a script but it's it's in my brain that's actually that's a good point like I, I that's how I used to do some of my really old rent videos and things like that like I, I, I kind of rehearsed myself and then I got up in front of the microphone and recorded it all ah uh, okay. and you know what the irony is yeah in my earlier reviews even though I do them completely ad-libbed It sounds like that I'm reading from a script. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I guess it takes a while to get a natural flow, and you know, th these days, like I, yes. I, I could not, I could not consider uh, doing a review video without a script. Like, I absolutely need the need the script just so you know I don't go off topic because that's the thing. That's the thing why why I, why I used to practice. Sorry, Jimmy, I'm making this about me again. <laughs> For fuck's sake, I feel terrible. <laughs> But uh, the thing is, like, I the reason I uh, rehearse so much is because I oftentimes I go on weird side tangents that don't have anything to do with the stuff I'm talking about. But sorry, go ahead. Uh. Okay. Um, other perils I've noticed about vi video making is sometimes when I listen back, I sometimes, sometimes you know, sometimes <laughs> I'm saying sometimes too much. But when I listen back to some of my reviews, I notice that I make flat out mistakes, and the oh. problem is trying trying to edit out those mistakes to where the review sounds, you know, natural. But sometimes that just doesn't work, because the the thing I always find hardest about reviewing is the recording, because because quite frankly, I can't just record convenient like I just can't whip out my uh, microphone and just record conveniently. No, there's so much things going on in my life. I have to, you know. Book a certain time to actually record reviews. So re-recording stuff is very rare. But thankfully, when you like, when I record stuff, I make sure to like do use and whatnot, so they can be replaced. But sometimes, you know, mistakes parts can sound so terrible. Especially as I, I'm just repeating myself now. But yeah, sometimes when you edit something out, you can hear like that weird, <coughs> like that weird like jump cut sort of thing. And the thing that's always painful is. Like as a video cura curator, as a video creator, you, you should, as a video creator, sorry, I'm stumbling again. You should know that um, we are we are our own worst critics. Like we always notice mistakes, and we always get overly worried that somebody's going to notice them, and half the time they don't. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And hey, I want to give you a word of encouragement. Uh, whenever you make a mistake. And this is this is for Kaiser, but this is also for anybody listening who makes YouTube videos. Whenever you're gonna make a, whenever you make a mistake and you notice it and you start to feeling bad about it, just think about the fact that I thought Fern Troyer was black. <laughs> <laughs> You'll feel a whole lot better about yourself after that. <laughs> I thought he was gonna say something real mean, like "Do your fucking research, man." <laughs> <laughs> No, fuck. I'm. Who am I to criticize? Fucking. I done so many mistakes on my videos, and I've even like, uh, yeah. I, I've even, you're a lot. Like, you're a lot braver than people thinking I'm right, and then later I find out I'm wrong, and I feel like a complete asshole about that. So yeah. <laughs> uh. All right. Uh, we talked. We talked about. We talked about um, going back to the perils of video making podcast. The very final thing, and I think by that point we were also tired and tuckered out that we didn't really say much. But we were talking about videos we'd never make. <laughs> I think I think the collective answer for everybody was porn. <laughs> that was the only thing. I think I was the only one that said that I'd be open to doing something like that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
But no, no, I'm not being actually star in one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd only produce the porn. I wouldn't actually be doing the porn. Because <laughs> trust me, when you when you become a, a video game reviewer as a job, you tend to get introduced to a lot of weird shit. <laughs> and some of those games you play typically tend to have graphic sex scenes in them. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not my... It's, it's, it's weird. When you're a reviewer, you just get all these things sent to you. It's just like... Sometimes you get the most innocent stuff, then it's just suddenly okay. But that's a reviewer's job. Oh, you yeah. gotta be careful. You gotta be careful in what jobs you accept, because so if you if you just click yes to every single email, sometimes you might start saying that. <laughs> and not to mention, some games are just plain bad, you know. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, our introductory segment is kind of drawing to a close. I just want to quickly ask about. Um... We also did the Disney cartoon cast. Do you do do was there was there was there anything we left uh there that you had a bone to pick with or something we were talking about? We- my only bone to, my only bone to pick with um Disney cartoons is sure they're really fun and entertaining, but after an episode's finished, I tend to forget I tend to have forgotten everything that's happened in that episode. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm looking back on this, and we we we, we kind of ended up in a weird uh, tangent, uh, back and forth with the Mighty Ducks cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> that weird... one I oddly enough do remember. Yeah, and I remember it too because I watched it and I thought, like, oh man, there's so many like cool different voice actors in this, and like. Yeah, so I was... oh, yeah, I remember watching. It's like, what the hell is John Belushi doing in here? <laughs> Like, as, as a good reaction, not like, um, get that guy out of here. Well, yeah, that, and I think, am I remembering correctly, wasn't Tim Curry in, in it as well? Yes, he was and, the main bad guy. And, and then, then, then the guy who was the voice of Frollo, uh, Jay something, uh, what's his, what's his name? Um, God damn it, uh, I'm gonna Wikipedia soon if I don't remember, but, uh, <laughs> the Jay, Jay, what's his face, uh, not Jay Leno. That's that's different. <laughs> Justice Evil, but not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't even say that without like giggling like an idiot. <laughs> oh crap! I, of course, I put it in Hunchback of Notre Dame. I forgot. Yes, it's a book too. So yeah. Uh, Tony J. Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. Tony J. Who's I saw rem- Yep. I also remember when we were like talking about the show. We also figured out. We also realized. Just how overqualified the voice actors were for that kind of show. <laughs> yeah, about for a cartoon show, for a sci-fi oh. cartoon show based on a hockey team loosely. They come from the they come from the planet Puck. <laughs> oh boy, Puck Man. <laughs> that's you know <laughs> the the original Pac Man name, but yeah, that's a, that's also a dangerous name to misspell. Uh, <laughs> the planet Puck. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> it's the mighty fox, everyone. <laughs> I sent some foul play in the air. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> oh dear. I haven't had anything really super Disney esque happen to me uh, recently or um, something like that. I've been getting, I've been, I've been getting back as the year has been closing out. I've been getting back to doing the uh, a few more He Man reviews because you actually. You seem to enjoy the He-Man reviews a lot. Oh, I love them. That's what got me into your channel. <laughs> okay. Even though I've been only doing them since 2012. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've at least been doing He-Man discussion videos, right? Well, yeah. I, uh, okay. I did do... I don't remember. 2009, possibly, I did that horrible uh, video where I listed my top five least favorite uh, He-Man characters. Be- That's the first yeah, time I just- talked about... Jeremy, <laughs> <laughs> that little bastard. That little dipshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love your latest one of your like your your redux of your um <laughs> mighty ducks redux. Uh, yeah. of the Redux of your top <laughs> bottom ten. I love some of the clips you pl- you played. Like the one saying, "No, I will not use my skills to help you um to commit crime." Right after he helped him to commit the crime. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, I, I cut out the part where the... the it, it, It's not a shopkeeper. I said I was a shopkeeper, but actually, I think it was supposed to be a jeweler. And he stops playing the flute. He turn, The guy turns around and sees Marzo, and then he kind of sheepishly walks away. <laughs> you know, doesn't even call the 
not not that there's cops in Eternia, but the I, I guess the guards. But then again, the royal guards don't do shit in like He Man most of the time. <laughs> They're like, that's yeah, the thing like, I know. Fucking arm out of here. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the thing like... I noticed with any cartoon where one of the central characters is royalty, like in He Man, because you know Adam is a prince and he lives in a palace, and they have a the royal guards, and another one is the Zelda cartoon, you know, Zelda is a princess, and she's the heir to the throne, but the friggin', the guards at the at Hyrule Castle, and the guards at Palace Eternos, like, have the episodes, they're not even there. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, I'm, 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 I like to imagine, this is a completely stupid thing, but I like to imagine, like, there's a huge problem in, like, the labor, uh, in the labor rights system, so they're kind of, like, on strike every other day. So that's when, when uh, we're, only getting, yeah. we're only getting a few rup- lousy ruples for this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, you know, which is so funny because then in Shira, you know, uh, Etheria is been, you know, is being is technically occupied by the evil horde, but they're like so incompetent. It doesn't even matter. You know, everybody goes about their business like normally anyway. You know the horde are just kind of there as a nuisance, but they, but what can you expect? Like they have a they have a robot army, and it's the least efficient robot army in history. <laughs> lazy robots. Well, not even lazy. Like they're programmed with a personality, and they get scared, and they get like they flinch, <laughs> and they do stupid stuff that robots aren't supposed to do, and that kind of makes them terrible <laughs> henchmen. <laughs> that, that sounds funny. Oh, yeah, it is funny. Like wh- one of my favorite, like, probably one of my favorite um, moments in a Shira episode. I don't remember which episode this was, but um, it's um, it's I think Bo and Cal, both the guy with you know the bow uh, <laughs> who looks like Errol Flynn. Uh, he- he's breaking into a horde facility, and there's a bunch of these uh, robot guards, and they're kind of talking shit on the rebels, like. Man, if those dirty rebels show their face, I'm gonna knock them out and things like that. Like, yeah, she she wrote better not show her face. I I I think that was the funny part. Like one of them said, like, man, she wrote better not show their face. And then an arrow flies right over their heads with a cable on it, and they said, whoa, what's that? Oh, it's only Bo. Oh no, not Bo. <laughs> And then, like, <laughs> the guys were talking shit on Shira a second ago, and then fucking Bo, you know, the Errol Flynn with a heart on his chest, you know, the, the chest armor, like, <laughs> comes in, like, and now you're, like, scared shitless. <laughs> it's like, how, how much more dumb, how much more dumb can you get? Uh, that's futuristic technology for you. Oh, boy, yeah. <laughs> Okay, but I think we've gone on. We've gone on for almost 40 minutes now, so I think we're going to take a break now. When we come back, we'll have a lot more people on the show, and then we'll just shoot the shit and talk more random stuff. <clears throat> so yep. catch you on the catch you on After that the, half of the podcast. Uh, do you have something to say? Yep. After this break, no match game. No match game. <laughs> Welcome back to White Devil Podcast. Now we're joined by Dorupka. Hey, what's up, fellow beasts? This is your one and only gaming beast. And Kaiser is about to go to sleep, pretty much. <laughs> actually, actually, I got a bit of a sore stomach. I might blow up a big, huge fart at any time soon. Oh, Not on the air, though. I'll mute myself. <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, so Dorupka sh- joining us. Uh, we've already discussed a little bit about how this year's been a bit of rough for... Um, the White Devil podcast. We've had a, uh, uh, we we haven't had this few podcasts. You know, this is only the fourth one this year. Uh, we haven't had this few since we started in 2013. But um, and and this is also your uh, you were you were actually on the um, uh, the very first podcast we did this year, weren't you? I believe so. Yeah, yes, I would have to were, check. You, yeah, you were co-hosting on the Mister Weenie Catches Up cast. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, so. But yeah, so we've had a bit of a, and then uh, you had to go away for a little while. Well, you were on the Peril yep. Video Making podcast as well, so. Yeah, I was still on that one, yeah. Yeah. So how did you feel about the podcasts this year? Or did you have at any time to listen to them? You were pretty busy. <laughs> well, uh, as far as I remember recording them, I thought it was, they were good. Um, I'll listen to them eventually. Like, I like to give it some time. Oh yeah, and then it's like a new thing again, you know. So yeah. I, 
I think they were they were good. Yeah, we we talked um, about well the Mr. Weenie cast, uh, Mr. Weenie catches up cast, which was our kind of follow up to the Mega Man 2.0 cast. So I guess in a way it was Mega Man 3.0. Yes, actually that's what it says on the on the White Devil site as well. Uh, is of course that we had we wanted to have we originally had Mr. Weenie on uh, episode 19, or we were supposed to. That was the one Kaiser was on as well, but uh, he had to leave just as we were starting, and so we had him back for another round, and basically we, we just had a whole bunch of nice Mega Man talk, and we've had a little bit of Mega Man talk here uh, with Kaiser as well. Uh, so, Dorovka, do you have any... Have you, have you been able to try out Mighty Number no. 9 this year? No, not yet, no. I heard okay. some negative reviews of it, um, How and also people complaining about the Kickstarter... Um, yeah, we discussed all that, but we also discussed with Kaiser how, um, how, how in spite of all that outrage, which I, you know, I'll, I'll admit some of it maybe is perhaps warranted, uh, the game itself, actually, and because I've been playing it uh, on Xbox One as well, is that the game itself is really good, and actually I liked it better than either Mega Man 9 or 10, so... Uh, <laughs> really? I don't know, like, I, I thought that... At least I haven't played nine or ten, but I thought that them going back to the old school graphics was a cool thing to do. Well, yeah, that was you know it was a cool idea, definitely. But uh, the thing is, actually, what, what we were discussing with Kaiser just before uh, the podcast uh, was the fact that um, I actually did, did a thing recently where I was playing, where I alternated playing Mighty Number no. Nine and then Mega Man Nine and Mega Man Ten, and. Uh, it's tiny things, it's small things, but honestly, like, the fact that you could not slide in either of those games, that was a big th thing, because when in, then in Mighty Number no. 9, you don't kind of, you don't really slide, you more like, it's more like the dash from Mega Man X, but the fact that you can just do it in that game, it just, oh, like, it feels so good. <laughs> so, it makes a right. lot of difference, because when you kind of blaze through it, but, um, so yeah, well, that, that was just one thing that we talked about this year, and the other one was the uh, perils of video making that you were on. Do you remember anything from that podcast? <laughs> They're up, Cap? Uh, we were talking about the problems of video making, and uh, yeah, I remember that. It was good times. Yeah. Yeah. So how? how I think. Oh, yep. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Now I was just about to ask, like, uh, have you uh, since your return? Have you thought about like uh, about uh, starting up the videos again and? I, I will. I will definitely. Um, that's something that will happen. I just uh, had some personal issues I had to deal with, and in a way, yeah. I'm still dealing with them. And once I'm, like, I want to try to at least do something before I go uh, to Hungary to my family for Christmas. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, like once that's the case, um, yeah. Like all I can say is that. I'm definitely excited and I want to do videos, but it's most likely going to be uh, more videos coming, uh, like in the future, and uh, that's really all I can say at the moment, because I've been, I, I've been somewhat uh, demotivated and stuff uh, with making videos, because also YouTube has been really crappy, and people have not been getting, because the way how they changed the algorithm and the system... Like, you know, I'm not doing it really for the views. You know, I'm doing it for myself. However, I, I, what I do, what I like to do is interact with people. And, like, I haven't gotten that much from that. And I would like to have more of that. Yeah. Just, you know, interacting with people. And, you know, like, I don't know. I, I, I would like to, one of the things about video making is that you've got to keep yourself motivated. I think that's the main thing. Oh, yeah. Because if if you got, like, obviously you should do it for yourself, but if you make a video and almost nobody watches it, it's kind of almost like, what's the point on one hand? Maybe maybe that's something that people disagree on about, but that's something that I feel passionate about. Like, what is the, what is the thing that drives you on to make videos, you know, because... Because I actually do enjoy making videos, um, but some there comes like a point where you just question it, like what what's the point of it, you know? So, yeah, yeah, those are all valid points, and also 
And if you want to, you know, before Dorupka does his shameless plug here, if you want to hear Dorupka before uh, he does his own, he's already been featured on the, again we, we, when we when you came back uh, from your uh, uh, from your hospital from your hospital stay. Of course, we did. We've done more episodes of Broken Sword, and that was a good, that was a good, great thing to finally get that going again. Like it's it's really fun. Like you know, it's strange how you know uh, those random bits of conversation where we almost <laughs> never seem to discuss the game. We're just talking about other games. Like that's just a really uh, fun time. Okay, and also just in case you didn't, you were wondering, uh, Kaiser wasn't being just polite and quiet. He was actually away for uh, just a second there, so he just came back. <laughs> Yep. yep. Sorry to out you there, <laughs> but we were just talking about with Dorabka about the uh, the challenges in uh, making videos. You know quite a bit of that. You did the whole Shmup Dober thing this year. Oh, that drained me, but it also taught me how to um, effectively make a review. Yeah, and uh, funny enough, I, I was going to. I kind of hinted at this in our in our first segment here, but there's going to be one more. Well, it'll be out by the time this this is out, but. Um, there will be an, one more He-Man, she review video for me this year. This is going to be the final review video of the year. And it's kind of funny, like, you brought it up, and we talked about this in the segment, like, how uh, the He-Man reviews have been kind of going back and forth. Uh, and this year, I, I th- last year, I don't think I made it quite up to 10 videos because I don't do the big marathon of the He-Man reviews like I used to do. But actually, with that... Uh, we have ten. We have actually ten. If you count the Shira ones as well, we have. I basically d- done ten He-Man videos this year as well, and that's also counting the reaction one that you men- mentioned. I do have something I'd like to talk about He-Man related. All if right, you're yeah, interested. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I I've been really interested in the recent like days or weeks uh, in uh, bootleg He-Man toys. Like either it's either. <laughs> Well, it's it's more like they're they're knockoffs. You know, they're not straight bootlegs to a sense, to a degree. Um, but since he Masters of the Universe was such a successful toy line and franchise in general, um, I found out that one of the knockoffs was actually based on the DC Comics Warlords, and uh, it's basically, in a way, a knockoff of Conan. But oh, yeah. that has been around before uh, He Man, and a lot of people say that. He even took a lot of inspiration from Conan, so that's why they 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 did get sued by Mattel, but the court said, well, Mattel didn't own the copyright for muscular uh, action figures, men, you know, and and that opened kind of the floodgates for other ripoffs. And one of them, the more uh, the more cheap cheapo version, was like uh, a toy line that's that's been. Reused and, and re, repackaged and remolded multiple times, called the Galaxy Warriors, and they repackaged them in multiple ways. And I think it's it's quite fascinating um, <laughs> because they would uh, repackage almost the same mold, slightly modified um, in as other as 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 different toys, um, and uh, they they had ripoffs of the ripoffs and stuff. And it's it's quite a fascinating. <laughs> journey to 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 check out these because everything has like uh, everything that is successful has uh, knockoffs you know and the chinese mm-hmm. they oh, yeah. have knockoffs of superhero toys and they they sometimes are real like for example they had a knockoff in greece of a superman toy but instead of caught in order not to get sued often they change the name so instead of superman he's called special man <laughs> so, so uh. that, that one is genius, and it's not even the worst toy. He definitely looks like Superman, although kind of uh, like they took two toys and they combined him kind of badly because they took the body mold from an X Iceman figure, oh, and then made it so that it looks like a Superman costume, and it worked pretty well uh, for the most part. Um, and then they took uh, the head for the Kenner uh, Superman for the series, and they um, adopted that as like, uh, and they put that, and it just looks really weird. You know, his head is too small, and his hands are too big, and and the funny thing is, on his belt, what is he, on his Hulk? belt, what? what is, who is he, the Hulk? Uh, yeah, kind of. Because the funny thing is that because they did paint the character pretty decent, especially for like a like a, a knockoff toy, like it's not great, but it's still better than a lot of them. 
but they still left the belt where it has the X on it. So the reviewer guy who was reviewing the toy said, "Oh yeah, do you remember when when Superman joined the X Men?" And I was like, "That's great." So I was like, "Of course, me and my thinking with the multiverse." I was thinking, "Well, you know, since." Every one of those toys is a different uh, multiverse version of Superman and and other characters. Like they had like they they would package uh, toys from diff- different characters as like a team, and often they would never be in the same kind of universe. Like they had one they had a series called Sense of Right, and they had like a really badly made Superman, Batman, and Spider Man, and then they had one of the Power Rangers usually, and then Shrek. And I was like. I, I just I just want to see that movie. Like, that's the movie I want to see, you know? Like, I want to see fucking... Sometimes yeah, they would have Mr. Incredible that would be the, or something. That would, pretty much oh. be, that would pretty much be the movie equivalent of how me and my sister, we would play also with, you know, all the different action figures just together there. <laughs> yeah, sa- same here. I would mix yeah. and match. Everything was a big mixed uh, universe, really. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, I'm sure. not, I, I've, I've, I've mentioned this before, that even though uh, we, we had a little... Discussion of I don't remember if we were already recording. I don't think we were we recorded that part. But on the break between these two segments, we talked with Kaiser about the um, how Kaiser, as a kid, used to watch classic He-Man uh, alongside the New Adventures of He-Man. And that's funny because I never watched the New Adventures of He-Man as a kid, but I had the Captain Hydran toy uh, uh, because obviously you know it's Mattel, so obviously they released the toys even though the cartoon didn't air over here. And yeah, yeah. the Captain Hydrant toy was my favorite action figure growing up. It was always whatever, uh, whatever the the version of the, you know, whatever we were playing. He was always like my lead lead man. I I don't know for some reason I really just liked Captain Hydrant as a kid. So, <laughs> you know, um, Captain well, Hydrant, it's the guy, the it's the guy who could, character nobody gives a shit about. <laughs> but, he's the guy that he, he was the guy that could swim in the water, right? Yeah, he's the green guy with the flippers for leg. Well, maybe, maybe that, it was, that was just it. I thought it was cool that he had flippers for <laughs> for feet. <laughs> you know, you know, one thing that I find interesting about the uh, new adventure, like I never liked the new adventures of He Man, but maybe because I was older and I was and I always had fond memories of the original He Man, and I disliked how they uh, made it into more sci fi than the sci fi fantasy setting that they had. Um, yep. However, what I've seen of it, it's definitely better animated because they, instead of doing limited animation, they they like outsourced it to like oh, I yeah. guess Japan. And yeah, to... and this is exactly what I was saying with Kaiser too. That as a, that if I had seen New Adventures as a kid, I totally would have been into it. But yeah, it, yeah, go on. I, I did. I, I I did. I think I had some of the toys, and I have. I know that some of the pe- friends of mine had the toys, uh, and. Uh, like some of the friends had the sword, uh, but I, I just I didn't like it as much as the original He Man. Like, and I was already and I was a bigger Turtles fan at the time, so I was more interested in Turtles. So I would rather get Turtles figures. And, oh yeah, and actually Turtles. That's uh, that's something I wanted to. I had I had already forgotten. But when you were talking about the multiverse uh, thing of about thing of Bob. That's actually something I wanted to discuss. Okay, I'm not, myself, I'm not so much a fan of the whole multiverse thing, but here's something very interesting I've um, uh, recently kind of discovered, or or I guess I sort of knew this already, but I sort of rediscovered about the Turtles or TMNT in general. Um, First of all, have either of you watched any of the more recent television adaptions? I have watched a little bit of the, well, more recent, like, the, the most CG recent anime. I watched, the most recent I watched was the where they tried to make it darker. I haven't you watched the, the CG. Yeah. You mean the early two thousand one? Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen the um, CGI animated one because I just I, I don't know. I was I, I just it's a bit more sitcommy actually. It's it's very much and and they brought back um uh <laughs> and they brought back um oh god what, what am I uh, Rob Paulson Rob Paulson who was actually Raphael. In the 80s slash 90s animated version, he plays Donatello now in the newer version. And not only that, but he has a crush on April, so that's a thing that's in the in that version. <laughs> and just to say something about the two early 2000s versions, they actually had uh, P- Peter Laird was actually involved with that show. So the early 2000s version is a bit more closer to the comic book 
uh, than what what the, the version that I grew up with, which is also the '80s '90s version. Uh, it's hard to say I, what, what, because even the, I can't even call it by the production company name because the production company name is like three last names: Wolf, Murasaki, something. I I, I always forget what the third one is, <laughs> but you know the one I'm talking about, right. the one that had the, yeah. the you know the one with the iconic theme song and everything. But anyway. Um, so, did you know, actually, uh, this is now a question for both of you, did you know that all the different versions of the Turtles are actually canon? Yes. Yes, you knew. But I have seen that universes, why, right? Yes, why? Yeah. why? Because of alternate universes, and they already, the first time they acknowledged that was in the season finale for the early 2000s show, which was Turtles Forever, which uh, paired up the 2000s Turtles with the Wolf Murasaki, whatever turtles, and you mean the Archie comics turtles from the eighties uh, to er and early nineties? Yes. Archie yeah, I, I just yeah. Well, because the cartoon is based off the Archie version, which was more kid friendlier than the original, really well, dark. Uh, uh, okay, Archie. Well, sort of. I, I I only know the the cartoon and the 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 the, the Yeah. Yeah. Ne never yeah, really it was, it, 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 never really thought that they had had any connection with uh, Archie, like a lot okay. of American cartoons like a lot of American cartoons they were animated in Japan or in Asia and like yeah uh, it just but the basis of the storyline and the and the characters was from the Archie comics okay but uh, what, what I was ta talking about was the turtles forever that was the uh, that was the, uh, the sort of what I call classic turtles you know from the from the 80s 90s show uh, that that those turtles uh, met with the 2000s version of turtles. It wasn't like the best possible uh, crossover because first of all they couldn't get the original voice actors because it was a Fox show and Fox apparently has this thing with SAG and you know all the original turtles actors are SAG members and it was weird. And also I didn't really like the way they portrayed the old turtles because they made them look like real like <laughs> idiots. But um, but they've since brought it back in the, uh, the the more recent CG animated show, and they pretty much like blatantly came out and said that because of Krang, because Krang breaches dimensional borders all the time, and that's the reason why all the different turtles basically are allowed to exist in this kind of weird multiverse. <laughs> yeah, well, Krang comes from Dimension X, so dimensional travel, and also they had other characters from other universes appear, yeah. like Osagi yeah, Yayumbo. But but, even, oh, but, right. even, but this is really funny. Even more specifically, in the 2000s, ver in the uh, not the 2000s, the what's well, called Turtles TMNT 2012, I think, is what the official name of the CG show is. But it's in that it's revealed that Krang is like the screwed up, is the screw up cousin of another Krang from that timeline, and he was banished into the 80s, 90s TV show dimension because he was a screw up. <laughs> So <laughs> that, that's that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. So... I think that I I think that's pretty cool, because the turtles originally were a parody. Uh, even the dark ones was a was a parody on uh, popular comic yeah. books. The New Mutants from Marvel and Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, with the New Mut New Mutants were like they were uh, the first like teenage mutant team from the X Men. Yeah. And that's why they're called Teenage Mutant, although the definition of mutant was changed for the turtles. Kind of. They're still mutations, but instead they're not born with abilities or mutations. They are yeah. effect, they're mutated by the uh, ooze. Uh, and, and, uh, but still, even the kid, apparently the connection for, the, for Daredevil and the, the kid who's holding the... the um, the turtles, the, the four turtles, is supposed to be like uh, Matt Murdock, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, well, it's kind right. of you know originally, but they yeah. never say it because you know they weren't Marvel. Um, but yeah, I I think that's cool that they say that that there it's a multiverse, and I that even once I, I didn't want to watch the early two thousands show because uh, I did saw oh, some episodes and I thought it was really cool that they try to make it more consistent with the original comic book. Oh, even yeah. though I have a special place in my heart for the original Archies or like the original uh, original cartoon, uh, which is always going to be, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's always going to be like 
my turtles. Oh, and, and oh yeah, and that's the thing. That's the thing I almost almost forgot to say that in the TMNT twenty twelve it was it was a cro- crossover with the uh, the classic the original cartoon show, and there they did get. Uh, the original voice actors for the turtles, and they also acted a lot more like they did in on the cartoon show, which was which is actually it does it was probably the kind of cringiest moment of the thing. But uh, Raphael does the thing which he does in the intro, where he slaps a pizza in somebody's face and says, "Give me a break." <laughs> <laughs> I just, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a little. It was a little dumb, but uh, I thought, like, okay, I see what they're doing. But it was. It was interesting because it's when they cross dimensional barriers, like the CG turtles. First of all, they become cartoons, and then when the classic, uh, the original turtles, kind of go go into the 2012 dimension, uh, they become CG. So they also had that thing, and also the prime turtles from the original black and white comic. They are, you know, they're the. Uh, the mechanic is apparently, and because it was repeated in both um, those versions, that if the prime turtles, as they're called, are ever killed off or disappear or anything, that apparently wipes out the turtles in all the other multiverses. Yeah. Well, that comes yes. that's from, that comes from DC and Marvel, where there's the concept of a multiverse, and uh, like in, in in DC, it's usually 52 universes that are connected. And usually the idea is, although it depends on which medium you're going to, because what they say is usually if you destroy the prime universe, uh, which is the first one, then in DC, traditionally, the prime universe is our universe, kind of. Like, it's, it's a version of our universe where there's no superheroes, they're fictional. But they did have a character who was supposed to be this universe is so technically our universe is, or like one that is very similar to ours, uh, where there was a guy, he, he wasn't called uh, Superman, but he is actually Kal-El, but before, and before he could become Superman, literally the, the entire multiverse uh, crashed together because of the uh, crisis of infinite Earths. That's when DC decided to make a great uh, crossover event to basically... Um, all the universes were destroyed, and they became one, which was New Earth. And uh, they did that actually. That, and then again, they had an event where they brought back the, the 52. And it, it's it's interesting because when they were destroyed, not all not all characters uh, disappeared. Um, they had some characters survive, and Superboy Prime, who was supposed to be like he literally was in a super Superman costume. For Halloween, and then that happened. So that's why he was wearing the costume. But he becomes actually the villain for the Infinite Crisis, which happens many, many years later. So it's really weird. And the final fight is between Earth One Superman, who is like the one that was, uh, and and uh, Earth Two Superman, who you could consider he's the older, more experienced Superman. He's basically, as far as I understand, he's the Superman that was also in the Golden Age of comic books. And uh, he's trying to do it to save uh, Lewis, who's really old at the time. And they're fighting, and Superboy Prime basically is this becomes this even more powerful. Like, uh, like if you want to talk Dragon Ball Z, Superboy Prime would be Super Saiyan three, and the two Supermans would be like maybe two or one, you know, kind of thing <laughs> level, or even four. Like Superboy Prime is just out of out of this world. When it this is even him, my final form. <laughs> yeah, he kind of is. He wears like a suit, and he's like he's like if a '90s kid. Like it was, it's kind of weird. The point is that uh, later on, they they trap him. They need to trap him inside of a red sun, guarded at all times by a bunch of Green Lanterns. And uh, <laughs> he, he, he does he he does escape and becomes a Yellow Lantern, I think, or something. So oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So. All the colors it's, of the rainbow. <laughs> yeah, they, they they added for Green Lantern. I really need to read because apparently it's really good. It's called the Brightest Day, Darkest Night uh, series where they added a bunch of new rings. And every ring now, as, as it says, it represents a, a type of emotion. And um, yeah. it's, it's pretty sweet, actually. Mm, what, if, what if the planet Tears are secretly some kind of lantern group? Honestly, it would make a lot of sense. You know, because literally, like, uh, the Matisse heart could be like the purple ring, which is supposed to rep- represent love for Star Sapphire. 
And I mean, there is also the the red ring, which re represents rage. So like Hulk would be, and the rings choose out people who they find appropriate. There's also the black lantern ring, which mm -hmm. literally uh, brings back dead dead people, like dead heroes. Like they had <laughs> their their version of Marvel Zombies, which I really want to read, is instead of Marvel Zombies, they're still zombies, but they're all red, uh, black. Uh, ring wear, so the rings <laughs> choose them out. So they're Super still zombies, Superman, but they're in Earth, space. <laughs> yeah, they have literally Superman, Earth, Earth Two Superman, who died uh, defending. Um, I had fighting to say Super that. Bowl. Sorry, I, I just have to say that because I just recently watched. Uh, somebody had made a compilation from the Homestar Runner uh, series. That they're limous limousine, but they're in space, which is the. Failed limousine a car, a cartoon pilot, which is also done by a company called Metalmation, in reference to Filmation, who did he man? Oh, nice, <laughs> okay. nice, nice. Yeah, sorry. Go all, on. All, all, all that I, I just want to finish here that, um, for example, Earth Two Superman gets resurrected because he died in the Infinite Crisis uh, final fight, and so like you have a bunch of these characters who are dead at the moment. You know, with comic books, they always come back. But they were dead mm -hmm. at the moment, and then they were like zombies because of the... And it was a really cool way of doing their own version. And it was canon at the time, so it wasn't just like an alternate universe like Marvel Zombies was. Um, so, yeah. and It truly is black magic. Yeah, I mean... Well, technically the rings are like super advanced science, but it's basically magic. So Yeah. <laughs> Well, but the de from the death means well, it, magic. it is it is <laughs> it is it, it 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 is not magic because magic usually because for example magic affects Superman. So after their definition, it's like super duper science where it's so advanced. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, that, that was that's a reference. Like to, sorry, hey, that was a reference to a strong bad email again. Sorry to bring it back to strong bad, but or Homestar Runner, but it was. The, the, it was the technology email where Strong Bad said, the word technology means magic. It's basically all the cool stuff that you don't know how it works. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Dravka, yeah. here's a good question for you. Who do you think will win out of the fight between Superman and David Copperfield? Well, obviously Superman. David Copperfield is like, I could do nice tricks, so. <laughs> I, are you sure? I reckon Clark, Clark Kent will. Hat as soon as like watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Oh, oh he thinks it's magic, right? Okay. <laughs> no, the funny thing is they actually referenced oh, that. There, there was a Superman comic where Superman was in the audience for a magic show, and he just he just kind of used his his X-ray vision so he could see the tricks, you know, how they were happening. Oh, and and oh. then there there is like a moment where the next performer comes. And he sees that it's actually, like, I think it was some kind of superpower or some kind of magic. Like, the reason why Superman has so many weaknesses is because, you know, he's so, he became so powerful. The only way to make him interesting is to add a bunch of weaknesses. Yeah, isn't it, why sorry, weakness? Isn't Superman, it's a rock. Isn't Superman weak against magic? That, that's what I... He is, he, magic, I mean, of course, green kryptonite, and there's, there's like, there used to be a bunch of colors, the entire rainbow color of, oh, the, yeah. of kryptonite. <laughs> but there is there's always there's always green and there's always red and green always affects his body because it's it has the radioactivity of krypton which wouldn't bother really yep. although they have red and and then yeah, and but, red but what i was red, but i what i asked was super superman is not superman weak against magic yeah he is he is that's yeah. the joke okay. that's why that's yeah. why kaiser said the whole david copperfield you know? <laughs> but yeah. in all seriousness in all seriousness if they a Marvel crossover where I reckon Superman would lose if he was put up against Juggernaut. There was actually Marvel versus DC, and Superman fought against Hulk. And the the thing about that that uh, it was it, it is a canon story, um, e even though the universes have been rebooted multiple times at this point. But uh, <laughs> Super Superman. That's a nice fought, way of saying it's been swept under the rug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not not quite because um, the uh, the amal amalgam universe that is the merged universe between Marvel and DC still technically exists, but the reason why they won't do anything with it or with the, another crossover is because um, like they used to they used to be able they did you, they did a couple of crossovers other than that they had for example a real one Batman versus uh, Hulk they had uh, Superman versus Spider Man. 
And that's like Silver Age Superman. So they had to give S- Superman a real big boost. I mean, Spider-Man a real big boost. Because, like, literally, Superman could have just destroyed him. But apparently it was like Lex Luthor gave him some kind of, what, what uh, Red Sun Ray or some shit. So he could pass through the, the abilities. But oh, yeah. the, funny thing, the funny thing is, it, after it wore off, it basically they fight, and then they and then the powers wear off, and then they decide, hey, let's let's fight against the villains, which was Doc Ock and the Lex Luthor, and it's another alternate universe where they didn't, they basically exist in the same universe. So it's a universe where Marvel and DC exist together, you know. So yeah, and they and they, it's it's very interesting because um, I think mostly is that because they are now more rivals than ever. Um, to a degree, they they won't do any crossovers because uh, they will try to focus on their. They have been trying to focus on their own thing and. Uh, okay. Yeah. Which which comic book crossover? Um, which comic book crossover would you really like to see? Well, if it's a comic book crossover, they probably most likely did it because those are most likely to happen. Um, like uh, one of my favorites is Lobo versus Mask, um, but. If anything, I would like to see. Um, if I'm just thinking about characters that would be interesting that I, I that I don't know that have had a crossover, I Mine would say would De- be... De- Deadpool versus uh, Lobo. I think that would be great. Yep, that's a good one. I'd also say Mask versus Mask. You like the movie Mask versus the the much darker uh, comic book Mask. <laughs> no, I was talking about like comic the dark horse comic book Mask, but you know that. That soup, that eighties um superhero cartoon mask m dot a dot s dot oh, I never nice. I never seen that. I've seen only seen the intro on YouTube. <laughs> oh wow! No, yeah. I used to watch that. I had the toys too. I had some of the toys too. That was great. Now they're actually making a mask movie. They're making a movie on uh, based on a bunch of the Hasbro toys, and they're also making a uh, cinematic universe because not everybody wants to be Marvel. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Wait a minute. The Hasbro cinematic. Are they for that when they're doing that? Are they like rebooting the GI Joes now? Yes, yes, they're okay, rebooting yeah, that's, GI. That's what I. That's what I thought. We we've had this discussion previously. Yeah, we if, had if this not discussion. Here on maybe possibly one of the broken sword episodes <laughs> because it's we, it's, it's we gonna to be talk, it's, talking about a lot of different stuff on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna be like yeah, visionary. including including mentioning me as a mime. I'm still hurt over that, Derevka. How oh dare boy. you compare wait, me wait to till you, mime? Wait till you hear what we said in a couple of episodes about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm j- this isn't a spoiler, but uh, basically I kind of screwed up one of the intros for the episode, and I I was supposed to say I'm here with Dorobka, and I said I'm here with Retro Kaiser, and then what happens after that was just brilliant. <laughs> You'll get to see that in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> I'm I'm Australian, not Austrian. <laughs> d- d- there you go. There you go. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Even though Durant is not Austrian. Ugh. Well, yeah, but, you know, Austro-Hungary was once a thing. And he's yeah, part Hungarian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't tell this to Hungarians, really. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that was a joke, as they say. Yeah, 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 obviously. I'm, I'm just kidding. Geography slash history joke. Nobody gets it, of course. <laughs> yeah. All right. What were we even talking about now? Uh, crossovers. <laughs> yep. What crossover would you like to see, Hanu? As a comic book or what? Anything. Uh, let's just make it anything goes. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I kind of did it already with, um, you know what I'm talking about. When I was uh, uh, last year, at the end of last year, uh, I was drawing the little comics. So I was doing the um, Mortal Kombat versus Street Fighter thing. That's that's something that I kind yeah. of that's something that would be kind of cool to see honestly. That's that's something that everybody wants but there's a good chance it will never happen again because like it's the same rivalry because the funny thing is that Capcom made multiple crossovers with with uh, Marvel and then eventually uh, the guys who make Mortal Kombat NetherRealm they decided and Warner Brothers they decided to interestingly enough since it's a Warner Brothers game now who are then going to cross over with DC, you know? And I felt like, why don't you give us the crossover we really want? Because even though I, d- I do think it was cool that they made it, I would rather like to see 
DC versus Marvel, the, the fighting game, and Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat. Yeah. And you know what other thing? Yeah. I've, I've, we, I think me and Kaiser, we've talked about this on some, somewhere before, but you know, who, you know who's actually a huge uh, Mortal Kombat fan? Who? The guy who created Dead or Alive. And he's apparently, for years, he's tried to get mid, uh, Midway slash Netherrealm to do a Dead or Alive Mortal Kombat crossover. <laughs> which, which, I, which, well, which I previously mentioned, if that were to happen, I would feel extremely conflicted because... You know, Mortal Kombat's known for, like, the violence, whereas DOA, you know, is known for something else. <laughs> known for the jiggly bits. Known for the so. jigglies. <laughs> I, 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 Sex I, and I, violence, the game. Yeah. Well, 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 one thing about that, they have made multiple... I mean, one of the things that kept the fighting game genre alive is crossovers. They made also Tekken versus Street Fighter and Tatsunoko versus Capcom. They made a bunch of different ones. Um, I would say actually some that would make, and they had also some characters pop up, like uh, uh, many characters that are not necessarily fighting game characters, uh, but in other games, like they had Kratos and and and, uh, and uh, they had now Predator. They had a bunch yeah, of Mortal Kombat games. I saw yeah. apparently Spawn is going to be in the second Injustice game. I think that's cool, but I would rather see Spawn in a Mortal Kombat game. Spawn has been featured. In the there is a uh, Soul Calibur well, game, I think Soul Calibur three, two. where in the well, American well, version, well, well, Soul well, Calibur two, Injustice, Injustice is to some extent a Mortal Kombat game because it's still by Nether Realm. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. It yeah. has also a very similar system. Like it's almost the same with one difference, uh, where it's a little bit adapted more to the superheroes, where you have one button where you can activate a special ability. You know, like uh, yeah. Like for for green arrow, it's like shooting the arrow, so you don't have to do a special just to shoot a basic arrow. And I really like that because you only do specials for sh- shooting the special arrows that he has. So yeah, I I, I will also say that um, I I will think that since they made multiple crossovers, like they they had in one of the Soul Calibers in the U- U.S. version, they had Spawn, and then in the GameCube version, or the Xbox version they had Spawn, and the GameCube version they had Link, and then in the PlayStation version they had a Tekken character, and I thought that's pretty cool. They had also Star Wars characters, like Soul Calibur is really open to crossovers, uh, but it's like it's like separate characters. What I would heck, think he, would be... Heck, the guy from Assassin's Creed was a playable character in one of the Soul Calibur games. Yeah, I mean one of the things that they have made in comic book form now recently, they have made a new Masters of the Universe comic that I want to read. And then also with those new with this rebooted Masters of the Universe characters, um, they have also made a DC versus Masters of the Universe crossover, and I feel like that would make a cool fighting game too, and it would give chance to uh, Masters of the Universe to get more attention again. Have you been following up on the whole? Uh, Masters of the Universe, the new movie developments. Yeah, they've been working on it for quite some time. Yeah, I have followed it somewhat, but like it's yeah, just a just, little bit like slow moving. Like month, yeah, a month or so ago, they actually uh, interviewed McGee about uh, how's it going. They're apparently they are in pre-production right now, but um, uh, th- that's the thing. Like they 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 keep it like so they're keeping it like so so. Uh, What's the word? Uh, they just don't want to like uh, announce anything. They're they're so tiptoey about it that, that that's what drives tight me lips. nuts. Yeah. What were you saying? Okay, I th- sorry. Tight, tight lipped. Tight lipped. Uh, I yeah. think honestly, it, I think they are not yet, and they're working on a script maybe, but they're not. No, no, the script's uh, been done it, for for like two years. I, I mean, they did another version of it this year. And, yeah, they, they, they rewrote it apparently because at one point it was supposed to be the guy who did G.I. Joe or and then he got – and it was supposed to be with Sony. Um, I don't know with which company it's now because the rights lapsed because they didn't they didn't make anything for a long time. I, I would say well, that I would really – They're Sony. I, I think it's, they're producing it through Columbia or something like that, which is a Sony okay, company. Okay. But the thing is – the thing uh, that that they've – Teased that for a long time now is that Kellen Lutz probably is going to be playing 
he man, but they but they refuse to like confirm it. Like every single turn when they've been asked, they just yes, we're interested in Kellen Lutz, but you know, <laughs> they still the they, they have not. They have not uh, you know, uh, they just refuse to say it out loud. Like what what, what they're gonna do with it. <laughs> well, yeah. w one thing that w with movies is like there's a lot of uh, dealing on the background that you don't see. So there's a lot of uncertainty, just like where. They, they. I, I think they intentionally spread rumors when things get leaked. You know, like literally, um, when the uh, when the Deadpool test footage got leaked, that wasn't the entire reason that Deadpool got greenlit because people were so excited for it, because they were they were working on it and tiptoeing around it, because the producers are so unsure. And you know, I think with He Man, they just say, well, it's an old franchise and even though on the one hand they lo they love to rebooting old for some reason old 80s franchises um but it's kind of a surprise that they haven't made maybe it's like gi joe didn't make the money that it was supposed to so uh they're moving away from adopting toys although on the other hand transformers did well so um and and, and hasbro is working on their cinematic universe so I think if Mattel uh, wants in on the pie, um, they really should, in a way, get going. I mean, I remember when they were working, apparently, on a Thundercats movie, and then they had a short test footage that was CGI. Then the movie fell through, but they made a new series that lasted a season. And that could have been also a reason, since Thundercats was a knockoff of He-Man. Albeit a very good knockoff. I really like Thundercats, so it's it's almost... it's in many ways better than He-Man because the animation is, is like superior, of course, but Ouch. it's the same concept. <laughs> no, I, look, look, I like He-Man because He-Man like codified a lot of cool things and I, and I do enjoy it, but I enjoy, and the cartoon is pretty neat, but I think just from a cartoon standpoint, uh, like I think Thundercast did it better because it was, it was actually done by the, the studio that would become Studio Ghibli, you know, so at least the animation part of it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Kaiser is uh, is about to leave us. So uh, thank you for joining us uh, on this podcast, this whatever cast, basically <laughs> we've been talking about. Yeah. Okay, Kaiser. Talk to you later, man. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Not even a word. Uh, he's he's probably dead. I mean, it's pretty late. It's pretty damn late for him. <laughs> I didn't want to hog it. It's just, you know me, when I talk about certain things. No, topics, no, no. We, just, we've talked, we've talked yeah. plenty with Geyser on the first, first half of this uh, podcast. Uh, okay. We're, we're just, we're just uh, still kind of waiting for Sendu to show up. And kind of, it's kind of starting to look bad. It's kind of starting to look bad. We've almost, almost yeah. been at this for an hour. So, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, um, I've been talk. I've been playing. Here's something that is more close to uh, to you and me's doing. I've been playing. I'm I'm now at the fourth Broken Sword game. Uh, okay. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Death. The Angel of Death, and I do see the problems with it. Like the controls are the issues. What I see the pathing. It's pretty pretty damn bad. Yeah. Like you're supposed to be able to control it everywhere with the mouse, but there's certain points where it's really annoying. So it's easier just to go back with the and the camera is also not the best, really. Oh to yeah. Say it ma 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 to say it mildly. Oh yeah. I mean that that's that's like you know, I don't know. Maybe part of it is kind of also that I'm a little impatient with games like that. As that uh, when it's like run because there is a run button and you can just run uh, with the keyboard. And I if yeah that's if that's, true. A, if that's the case, I kind of want to get to point from point A to point B pretty quickly. But then um, because the camera kind of just because camera can just kind of whip around unexpectedly, that just kind of slows you up even more. And I've noticed that when I was doing my, um, this was forever ago when I did the review video, like I realized like if you move uh, slowly and you kind of let George walk at the normal pace that he's supposed to walk, then, then the camera moves sort of work. So it's basically been tested for that. And it seems to me like they didn't really test it for if so, for somebody like me who, who would just run all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it it just feels to me like they wanted to implement um, like uh, like uh, mouse controls again, but they had uh, it just feels like it just works better with the uh, with the keyboard again. And honestly, like 
at least the previous game I had some issues with, but the controls seemed much smoother and much more oh, well yeah. tested. Like because story wise, I find it interesting. Um, how how, how far into like the game are you, have, actually? Can I just ask? I'm, I'm, uh, I just arrived in Istanbul, and that's when I stopped, because I was pretty tired. So I just finished the, the meat, the meat, uh, the, the mafia uh, <laughs> meat, meat production place, meat where they make yeah. likes. And, oh, and boy. You're in for some stuff. I will just say that. <laughs> oh, boy. For, I did watch a video of yours. I think it was the review for the fourth one where you were complaining about some of the bugs. So it's definitely not my favorite of the series. So that's that's for sure. But oh. <laughs> um, yeah. at least story-wise and character-wise, it feels pretty much... Uh, like I, I, I did like the whole jab at Andre Lobino where you have to hack it into his system. Yeah, yeah and that's it. It's like the, and, they had, and they put in a little mini-game to, uh, to hack it. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's actually the yeah, the the mini games. I actually didn't mind. Those were actually pretty good because uh, that those actually kind of tested your wits a little bit. Whereas the rest of the puzzles in the game, I wasn't too hot about. But yeah, what what you said about Andre was exactly the thing. You know, this is gonna link up to all our freaking let's plays. And if people have not been watching the Broken Sword let's play, they're gonna be confused. But we were talking about uh, the the the. You know how char- how Andre's character develops from Broken Sword one to two to three or Sleeping Dragon, where he gets the gr- gets the goth girlfriend and uh, actually stops being is it by the end of the game isn't so much of an asshole anymore. It becomes kind of a nice guy actually. And then in the fourth friggin' game, you know he's just you know he's become a complete asshole again. <laughs> <laughs> but we well, I don't know if see he, him. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think he's an asshole. I think just simply um, him and George don't get along because they had always a, well, a it's jealousy thing. He's blocked you from his uh, service because George has obviously told what happens at the end of the third game. A spoiler alert again for the third Broken Sword game at the end where you fight the friggin' dragon and yep, he doesn't yep. believe it and he's had the little drawing of a bunny slaying a dragon basically. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I, I I I remember that like. I, I think it's a thing of jealousy, honestly, yeah, but because. But that is got, that is so dumb. It's like completely nullifying this little this little arc of character development that they were building up for Andre in the third game, and now it's like, eh, let's just make him hate George again, just so we have an excuse to put a puzzle in the game. <laughs> it's just. Yeah, that's yeah. that's something, and and there was one I I could solve most of the puzzle, but there was one part. There was sometimes a part where really annoyed the piss out of me. Where one thing I hate is that I get it, you're supposed to search the areas and you're supposed to, and it shouldn't be like easy and it just shouldn't be like in your face. But like so often I know the solution, but I don't know how the fucking game wants me to do it because like you're supposed to create smoke to get the, rid of the uh, the mafiosos in that one room. Oh, yeah. And I thought, okay, there's a fire, they're, they're smoking the place. And I was like, I was looking around, well, I cannot pick up any of the logs, but apparently there's only one log you can pick up, and again, it's the fucking pixel hunting. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> None of these other logs are fine. Just this one log, you know? Just this one fucking log that I have to click on. Just this one and shitty I, and, log. <laughs> and I was, like, looking, I was looking through everything, and I was like, okay, so how the fuck do they want me to do it? Because you, you're thinking logically, but you've got to think, with moon logic, and it's it's I, 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 I talked about this before, but yeah, it's just so moon, fucking annoying. Moon, moon logic sort of become your catchphrase now. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I've been playing a lot of adventure games, so I think that's, yeah. that's uh... I had to name one of the episodes. I named one of the episodes after because you just pretty much you just went, oh god, moon logic at one point in the episode. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but oh boy, yeah, and you're only in Istanbul. Wait till you, oh my God, wait till you get to Rome. Like Jesus, uh, you're in for some shit. I'm just gonna warn you. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that is that doesn't that is sound good. <laughs> that is a bad game. That's all. Is I'm the doing. is the fifth is the fifth one better than? It's way better, uh, and uh, partly partly because it goes back to the 2D style. I, like I said, I, I, I like the third game. It's I, I personally do like the third game. Uh, but the second game, second game, second game had a bit of an interesting thing. You know, they released it in two acts because it was again one of those um, 
it was one of it was again one of those Kickstarter uh, based things that they they kind of released the first half of the game first. And yeah, then, episodic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Then they got the money. Uh, they they used the money they got from Act One to fund Act Two, and then they released the second part. And it's it's kind of the first part of the game. I, I guess was a little too. I guess a lot of people felt was a little too easy. So they kind of cranked up the difficulty on the puzzles in the second part. So that's it. so that's the kind of thing that you're going to notice probably with the fifth game is that it's it is good, but the first half will feel like a cakewalk, and then uh, then you, when you get to the second second half of the game, like the puzzles will suddenly get quite a bit more infuriating. <laughs> but I liked it I overall. Say- overall. I liked it overall. I, li- I liked it. Well, one thing I will say about the uh, fourth game is that story-wise, it's still it, it interesting, and uh, I do like how uh, you have now a new female sidekick, and uh, and you got kind of a new thing. But George still references, like I, I remember at one point, like I I am happy that they they got the it's the same actor who plays George, so there's this continuity going on. Oh yeah, and uh, and. Uh, and where he at one point calls Anna Marie Nicole, and Nicole, this is how we're gonna do it. And I think, ah, oh, it's just kind of adorable, <laughs> you know. And it's Who's like, Nico? It's like, yeah, it's it's, you know, I I I I I think that. Um, I mean, that's why I will say, like, uh, the the voice acting is actually like really good. Well, there was one thing about it that I was complaining about in the review, but overall the voice acting is really good, and Rolf Jackson still does an excellent job with that. So, uh, you know, the voice acting is like the least... It, it, it's like the least... one. The thing that I have the least to complain about. And... Yeah, yeah, there's... I won't spoil it. There's, there's a really funny thing that uh, George does a bit later in the game, so yeah. Yeah, there, yeah, there yeah. are some. There are good moments in that game. Like, I'm, I'm not saying that like it's like it's complete garbage, but it's like. <laughs> the, but the controls are really bad, and the engine seems like not really that great, and it has performance issues. And this is an old game, and I really checked everything, and it just seems like the engine is not because I can run you, like really you, high end games. You must have you 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 bought it from like where did you get it? Steam or GOG? I, I'm playing it on GOG at the moment. Okay, yeah, so you got it from there. the download services. Like, here's the thing. There, this is a big problem I, I had with... And this is a warning, pretty much, for anybody who's gonna who's planning on getting that game and it's maybe, like, just for nostalgia's sake or something, wants to get, like, a physical copy. Don't, because apparently it will not install on uh, post-Windows 7 uh, operating systems, yeah. I think. So there's a there's a block there's some some weird block on the software. I had the physical version, and when I was starting to do those review videos, I realized that it wasn't working. So I had to buy the game from GOG in order to make the review video <laughs> when I was making yes. it. Yeah, that's so. that's one of the big, biggest pains in the ass with uh, PC yeah, gaming it, is that it was it was yeah. right, right around that time when uh, a lot of game companies were putting in a lot of those. Uh, you know, security measures so people wouldn't make pirate copies, and it that's, yeah, what, that's what happens with. Then with some some operating systems, they just flat out don't work. Yeah, yeah, it's just because uh, they, for example, at one point removed the DOS as the basic operating system. Like it still it was Windows, but the core was still DOS. And then they went once they removed that, <laughs> that's when pretty much none of the DOS games worked. That's when they had to. That's when DOSBox, uh, which is a DOS emulation software, uh, basically opened the gates to that you can play uh, DOS games. And that's what really made GOG too, because DOSBox existed way before GOG did. And it was it was in the abandonware scene where people will upload old DOS games that weren't sold anymore. And uh, then GOG basically said, "Well, people are interested, so let's make money off the games." And get well, the rights. Then, and, uh, well, the the other thing is that what GOG does is that they optimize them for the OS. It's not just like that, DOSBox. You can make DOSBox run, and you can run old games on it, but they may not always run in the best possible way because the emulator may not be able to like hone in on what 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 are the um, system requirements, like something something as elementary true. as like clock speed. Or whatever, whatever it's called, like games might run too fast or something like that. So, I, I so will it's, say it's this: not, it's not you're not just paying for old games. There is actually, and I actually saw. I think the guy who started up GOG, um, 
he was being interviewed for Matt Chat as well, and he said, like, whenever possible, they do always, like, get in contact with the original guys who made the game, so they will get a portion of the money that people will pay for on a GOG. So it, it's not like... It's it's not like a super shady thing <laughs> or anything like that. No, GOG is is pretty legit. I mean, they get the rights. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and that's why sometimes it takes them a while to get certain games because yeah, sure. Uh, sometimes the rights rights are you know they're kind of a mess. So, um, oh, yeah. But the thing the thing is that about abandonware and with the DOS things is yes, they do set up the DOS box, but you can do that too if you know what you're doing. Um, and and. The only thing, I, I will say this, though, that it is m more convenient. And w the post-DOS games that were made for the older Windows things, those are much harder to emulate and get running. So for those, it's really good. And also, oh, yeah. if, if you want to have a legit copy, you know. And it's, it's not only that, you also get the manuals and you get all the goodies and stuff. So yeah. for me, I'm, I've been always a fan of, of GOG. I've been a GOG member before I've been a Steam member. And um, I, I had really fun playing old games. And to be fair, they're releasing a lot of new games now. But you know what? Every new game will eventually become an old game. So, <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting, yeah. I mean, it's true. It's true. It's an interesting way of looking at it. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, um, it's good stuff. So yeah, well, we've been going on for an hour now on this half of the podcast, and uh, I think we'll take a little break now and see uh, what we can see. Let's see if we can get Sendu on here, uh, and uh, th we'll be right back. We'll take a little break right now. So see you then. <laughs> Hi everybody! Welcome back uh, from the break. And guess what? Sendu is finally here. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. held a gun to my head. Yeah, we finally got Sendu here. Uh, of course, we've discussed already on the previous two segments. Of course, how there haven't been that many White Devil podcasts this year. This is only the fourth one. Uh, and Sendu, this is your first podcast for this year. You have made it for <laughs> the final one. <laughs> There's a simple explanation for that. Now cut away. <laughs> yeah, and you've 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 been making it making it back to YouTube again for a while. You were yeah, away for a uh, while. You know, a lot of stuff going in real life. Just trying to get myself settled in, and I got some time off work and took advantage of it, sort of. Yeah, uh, including uh, you finally posted that. Uh, that 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 Sonic um, Knuckles Knuckles in Sonic Two Let's Play that we did like a million years ago. When did we When did we record that? I don't even remember anymore. Uh, October twenty eighth of last year. Yeah, so it it was a long time coming. <laughs> you let it ferment no. for a while. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. I, Kais. I, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Kais. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say Kaiser liked it. I'm sure he did. <laughs> and, we, and then we, me and him, recorded Knuckles and Sonic 3. Yeah, I saw that as well, and it's... Uh, okay, what, what was I saw doing? It. I, I, you I, saw I, it? I didn't even release it yet. <laughs> wait, what... what? You did record something with Kaiser. I, wait a minute. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting it mixed up. You, you, you did Sonic CD, didn't you? Yeah, that was him. Yeah, that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Sorry, but um, what I was about to say, and now I completely Before. lost the, my <laughs> my trail of thought. Um, oh yeah, that, that that I had already that I had really just forgotten of, that we even did that uh, Sonic recording, and I look back on it. Surprisingly, it came out surprisingly good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had to edit some audio to sync it properly, but it came out all right. Yeah. Uh, although, like uh, last week, Retro Kaiser and I recorded Knuckles' route in Sonic 3. So, uh, and I actually had a controller this time that mostly worked. <laughs> Not nice. <laughs> that seems to be, well, that's been a running thing with me and Kaiser, but I guess we're, it's kind of extending to you because you're, you're, even, you're an even bigger 
Sega fanboy than me, aren't you? <laughs> and more it was legit my first than that. A more legit it one was my. That. Yep. It was my first video game ever. It was the first Sonic on the Genesis. Nice. What was yours? My first video game. Yeah, the first yeah. one you remember playing. The first one ever I played was Super Mario Brothers on the NES. So for 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 me, it was at a friend's house when I was really little, and it was I think it was Space Invaders on a ZX Spectrum, something Ooh. like that. <laughs> and uh, oh. and fr- Frogger, Frogger. Oh, I love Frogger. Classics, yeah. Konami and uh, Taito. <laughs> the first, it wasn't what I first owned. I think what we first owned was like some LCD games, like the Tiger Electronic ones, and then eventually an NES. Um, yes, the Tiger Electronic um, beeping boxes. <laughs> They're very collectible now. They're very expensive. I wish I still had my Golden Axe one. What? Why? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Apparently, it's 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 a thing. So. Ridiculous. It's uh hard to get. Makes it collectible. Doesn't yeah, have to be both. good. Yeah, like Cheatham and it's like Cheatham and Two. It's an abysmal game, but it's still worth almost a thousand dollars or something. Yeah. <laughs> because it like yeah. It was never released. Yeah. It was like stolen from a warehouse. Uh, yep. And then it was on. Then they made a repo called the Lost Levels after donating about twenty six thousand dollars to it. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a story for it too. Yep. Speaking of donating, we, because we've discussed it with every single in every single segment, segment, might as well bring it up now. Did you, Sendu? Did you play Mighty Number no. Nine? <laughs> It's been a running theme. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, Uh, Although I wasn't a backer for that, so... (laughs) Yeah, but when you say you you haven't played it, do you mean you, though, on something? No. Oh, okay. (laughs) I almost got it a couple times, but then I ended up buying something else. Ah, yeah. Okay. Well, we we won't go down that path. It's on my to-do list. Yeah, well, we won't go down that path because we've already discussed it. Quite ex- extensively with Dorovka and Kaiser separately. I was just curious oh, yeah? word, because donations came up. Yeah. <laughs> Which one of you is the one that liked it despite the hate? Which I haven't played like? it yet. Dorovka hasn't played yeah. it yet. Uh, me and Kaiser have, and we both uh, ended up liking it a lot. We actually played it a little bit before before we started recording with Kaiser, actually. Oh, and yeah? Started, we, should... we, we called it the so channel. Are you able to... We didn't record anything. Are you able, are you able to... Uh... Follow it, even if you haven't seen Mighty 1 through 8. But I'm dish. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, a, that's a great thing, God. because it's, it's, it's basically just, it basically just is a Mega Man game, so that's why I liked it. But yeah, I understand why some of the... I do understand why there is some amount of outrage about that game. Oh, but... calling that a Mega Man the game is like calling Shadow Complex a, a Metroid game. <laughs> But it is. It's it totally it, is. It's oh come a, on! It's a it, it's a it's a Mega Man game. Come on! Like like it's a better it Mega Man game than nine and ten. That's basically what I said in my review. <laughs> <gasps> it's a it's a Mega Man game. It's a spiritual it's okay. sequel, meaning like they didn't have the rights for the name, but everything a, else is Mega Man. It's okay, Hanu. I know you meant to say seven and eight. No, I meant nine and ten because those are the newest games. Man. Man, you get numbers mixed up a lot. <laughs> what, do you have something against the 9 and 10 that Capcom made a couple of years ago, the classic 8-bit style? You say you just got me mixed up with you. You should have asked, do I have something against 7 and 8? Because that's the one I put, put under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so, anything else? Is there something you're working on right now, Sendu? New video? <laughs> You did a. It was already a while ago, wasn't it? You did another two guys in hats Power Rangers thing. Yeah, that should come back if Joe ever shows up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If I mean, whoever like shows up. Oh Joe, yeah. Joe. <laughs> I, I, oh, I you that. remember? I, I really Joe. like those. You guys have a really good like on-screen uh, chemistry. That sounded weird. <laughs> <laughs> even if but you the, know what I mean. Even if those, <laughs> you guys work. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Digging so, the hole deeper. Are you two gonna do one? Two guys in Europe. 
You guys in Europe. <laughs> One day, maybe. I've been thinking of coming down to Finland. You mean, up, you know, we're north, we're or, north uh, from yeah. Germany. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True, true. You know, true. I, I didn't know, know that. I know what you meant. That was, I, I'm just busting your balls. Bustable balls. Yeah. yeah. I, I, mean, I didn't know no, that. I, mean, I don't know your tired. geography. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> If 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 you would want uh, ever you could you could come down here too so yeah you could probably hang out. once once the yeah you could yep. and uh, do episode reviews of Zelda cartoon <laughs> He Man would probably be more appropriate <laughs> oh but that was the obvious choice yeah yeah we gotta go we got we just gotta do like a whole friggin He Man marathon basically I'm gonna bring my DVDs <laughs> then I'm finally gonna watch it yeah. <laughs> It's a good idea. Yeah. I actually, something I want to do is I want to I want to scrape out all the the weird, obscure He-Man video games. Uh, and uh, oh yeah, there's some you, really good ones. You, you have He-Man on the Coleco or in television? I forget which one. That's that one is too. No, I'm talking more the Commodore 64 one. And they made some text adventures. Yeah, there has yeah, been a recent one for the uh, iPhone, which is it's a platformer and it's kind of like where it's a tongue in cheek, where they kind of it's really weird. I don't know. Did they You have you have a Commodore sixty four? Emulation Sendu, emulation. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, I saw friggin' uh, the retro store where actually this summer I finally uh I I bought a PlayStation two because I wanted to play Resident Evil one and two so badly that uh, so I got that. Uh I actually saw an Amiga and I was like I was very, nice. very close to considering buying it, but then I thought, like, man, I don't have time to set up a freaking old computer. <laughs> Not that Amigas uh, probably uh, need much setting up. <laughs> well, you would be... Yeah, the thing is the disk drives and everything, getting them to work, uh, because that can, can be a real hassle, honestly. <laughs> like, I know there's enthusiasts who have them and everything, Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, I'm fine with just emulating. Like, I can get the same thing out of that, so... Yeah. I'm also working on a new Power Ranger vs. Super Sentai. Sweet, yeah, I like those too. Yeah, the Power oh, Rangers. I only did one. <laughs> Have is you fair, been? Is it, uh, is, it, is it fair to say that the Power Rangers thing is basically the same for you as the He-Man thing is for me? Or <laughs> yeah, it is kind of. I don't know. Is it fair to say the Mario thing for you is the same as the Sonic thing for me? Yeah, that could be. I, I like I like Sonic. Sonic is still like one of my top game franchises, despite everything. <laughs> is that fair to say? <laughs> but they gave us the Chow Garden, which is a charm that can never be recreated. Oh, really? Oh, you challenging me? <laughs> no. <laughs> Although I've never, I have never given, I've never been able to breed a Chaos Chow, but. What do you guys talk, think about as Sonic fans that they're making apparently a CGI live action movie? I think we talked about this before. Is that, a, is yeah, that actually it's... coming? I'm not. I'm not. I haven't. I'm, I've fallen out of the loop on that one. Uh, I don't. Couldn't be. It could be still in development. Hell, who knows if if it's actually going to happen? Am, I don't think it's a fake news article that I found. It could be. Who knows? <laughs> Internet, right? That's a very. But, that's very reassuring. I don't think it was a fake news item. <laughs> Well, Sega has yeah. been interested. They also have, uh, like, are interested in uh, apparently what they said, kind of vaguely adopting their first-party <laughs> franchises into movies and and well, and, yeah, actually, that's, that's the thing I did hear that they are at least this year. I heard that they were seriously thinking about making a Shinobi movie next for next year, mm. but I haven't heard anything from it. Speak. Basically, some company <laughs> bought a bunch of movie rights for Sega games just recently. Yes. Speaking of movies, some of my viewers keep asking me to do a reaction video to the new Power Ranger movie trailer. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's my reaction. Looks like generic modern. Here's my reaction. Looks like generic modern superhero movie with no martial arts. I don't like it. Oh dear. <laughs> so everyone else. Is, yes, yeah, everyone you know else what? is like. Everyone else is like excited for it. I just I don't think it looks good, honestly. It uh, honestly, it it for me, it looks like where they're trying to make it darker and grittier, and they're. It just feels to me like where um, they do. They do. I, I I gotta say, I'm surprised they did went with the costumes being very close. Um, 
I think the trailer, I think there's going to be martial arts and the trailer is not, the trailer was very much a teaser trailer. Like you don't, you, you don't even see them in action in their suits. Um, so well, I'm going to, I'm going to wait and see. Well, no, but you did get to see uh, Jason and Kimberly in action in the trailer. Oh, yeah. That's kind of, yeah. I was, uh, I, I was just saying that, you know, you, you avoided, you avoided uh, caving in to the pressure of making a reaction video, whereas I, I, I kind of, out of sheer curiosity, just seeing what it would be like, I, just, I did that. Did you see that mm. reaction video that I did? <laughs> I've seen a number of them. I've seen Mr. Winnie's reaction video. He's optimistic. Yeah, no, 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 but uh, my, my reaction video, I was saying. Probably not. Oh yeah, I you did. This, I did a reaction video you. to the new Finnish He-Man dub <laughs> that they did. He-Man! Oh, I thought it was gonna be He-Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that, that is a great line from Ghostbusters Two. <laughs> I so thought it was straight. gonna be He-Man. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that was yeah. great. <laughs> the kids at the birthday party, which is sort of, I think really subtly ironic considering like he man was kind of on the way down when that was going on <laughs> yeah it was it was kind of an in joke because they were also referencing the uh how like uh, ghostbusters became this big franchise with cartoons and toys themselves yeah and, and and basically like it was kind of a reference but i think when they were writing it they didn't know that he man was I mean, it wasn't completely gone, but it was definitely going out, and there was other stuff more popular. <laughs> like, He-Man w- f- reached its popularity in the mid-80s. Yeah. It started I mean, in the Ghost early Busters 80s. 2, Ghostbusters 2 was 89, so that's kind of... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, it, it was still... I think they but were still you know selling what? toys. You know what? But... I will say, uh, for one thing, though. The movie takes place one year after the first one, which presumably takes place in 84. So in in the movie's timeline... They're still in 1985. So, yes, maybe that, that scene actually oh, does yeah. make a little bit more sense now. <laughs> 19, 1985 was a, a good year for He-Man, so that's true. It was, it was six years before I was born. <laughs> One year before I was born. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, guys, I gotta head out. Um, oh yes, so Dorobka has to now leave the podcast, unfortunately. So yeah, yes, but ah, uh, thanks. I completely didn't understand when he said it. What, one more thing, saying, guys, talking saying, about. Yeah, I'm saying talking about for, years. The, for the audience. I'm saying this for the audience because I might have to edit parts of this, but probably not too much. But thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys, for this moment. Bye. We'll remember you in the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> talk to you later, guys. Yeah, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Okay, and well, here's the interesting part. We've already kind of recorded the end segment for this podcast, but I, I might as well ask you the same thing I did ask of Darup, guys. Do you have – what are your plans for the holidays? Hmm. Visit home. Yes, visit home. Preferably. Preferably finish these last few videos. Uh, yeah, and it's a. Uh, what about New Year's? Do you usually get very uh, hyped up for New Year's? <laughs> yeah, I have to work on New Year's. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, so probably not. <laughs> yeah, my mine's what about be, you? Uh, my my my, my uh, holidays are gonna also be pre- pretty tricky now that I live uh, far away from uh, everybody. But I am planning to see like all my relatives during the holidays. People are gonna know about that, and people are gonna hear me say that pretty much exact same thing in the. End segment as well, so sorry about that <laughs> for the repetition. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. You can do one of those fake cuts to where you're finishing your own sentence. Is there, uh, Sendu? Is there something really big? Something? Has something? It, what? What? What's the best thing about this year? You would say the most that would kind of. Um, what, what would you say is the most? What's the peak moment of this year? I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a hard question. Yeah. For me, you know, despite the, all the difficulties it's uh, brought me, it's, it's definitely getting this job right now that I'm doing because I, I'm finally, like, in the doing exactly the thing that I, I, I went to uh, university for. So it's it's really nice, even though there's been some problems resulting from it. Like, it's it's actually, you know, been really good to, good for me. Uh, 
But uh, do you think at least like getting back in the YouTube game is that a is that a how how big of a positive that is that it for you? Mm, it's a relief. Yeah, I'm on my own now, just trying to do my thing and clashing some swords. Would you like to have a sword fight? <laughs> I don't know. I need to get. I need to dust it off. Dust it off. <laughs> what the what the hell am I talking about? But is there something else you want to ask or talk about in this uh, segment? This is now all you. This is now the Sendu show, officially. <laughs> oh, no. Are we ever going to meet your evil twin, Hanuki? Hanuki? I thought I, thought I was Hanuki. <laughs> no, that's Plot just the twist. name of... I am the evil twin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you had an evil twin, would you buy him lunch? <laughs> of course not. He's evil. <laughs> well, congratulations. You're the evil one. Because the evil twin always does opposite the good twin's good deed. Oh, yeah? Well, I already... Like I said, I am the evil twin. <laughs> no, the Tanuki suit from Mario. The one we get you, we call it the Hanuki suit. Nice. Nice. Okay. Would you well, rather be a squirrel or a guy with a cape? Would I rather be a squirrel or with a cape? Is that what you said? I, I, guess, I guess it's a raccoon, technically. <laughs> <laughs> I th- they do have the squirrel suit in now in the uh, new uh, Super Mario Brothers. You, yes, I finally got the name right. <laughs> Me? No, <laughs> the letter U. <laughs> that's that's a really funny blooper from the Weakest Link, which is the the goodbye. The, the lady lady asks uh, the lady asks um, the guy what what letter of the alphabet sounds exactly like the name for a female sheep. And the contestant goes, bah! <laughs> and then the, the lady goes, you, never mind. <laughs> it's like, I, I like, that she, like the how genuinely, like, <laughs> she's like uh, annoyed the guy doesn't understand the question. <laughs> mm. You know, yeah. the Brady Bunch once appeared on The Weakest Link. Even Cousin Oliver appeared. <laughs> Ooh. He said he hopes he doesn't, he said he hopes he doesn't get that show canceled, too. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cousin Oliver appeared on the last six episodes of The Brady Bunch as a desperate attempt to save the show. It didn't work. It backfired. Oh. Nobody liked him. Oh, is it, was that the blonde kid with the glasses? Yep. Okay, yeah. I've never watched The Brady Bunch, but I still I knew who that character was. I've seen bits of the movie. Uh, that's about the closest I've gotten to actually seeing The Brady Bunch. Da, 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 da. Here's the story of Honey Mackinac. Who is raising up three very lovely consoles? All right. Yeah. Seriously, you need more than three consoles. Yeah. Well, I do have more than three. <laughs> Did you ever get that Mega Drive? I got a Mega Drive for Christmas last year, actually. What'd you name it? Nothing. <laughs> That's a lousy it shall name. Rename, it shall remain nameless. Okay, but if we... Uh... If we don't have anything else you want to talk about, we we could we might as well like finally close off this podcast. Well, there's gonna uh, be what? one more segment after this, but uh, yep. What did, what did you what did you want mm. to say? Mm. You, got, you got the new game reveals. Interest in reviewing some of uh, the Telltale games. The Telltale games. Uh, well, I do have the means to uh, record footage, but I'm no no game reviews this year have been. I, I basically I've done one. That's the thing. Like so, I the amount of time it just takes to get the footage is it's ridiculous compared to the everything else. Like I was planning to do mm. one really big uh, review of several games, and in the end, it was just so much work that I just basically gave up and decided ah, I'll just do Castlevania Rondo Rondo of Blood because that's that's one of the people yeah. actually that I remember at least some person in co- in a comment in a video a long time ago has actually requested me to do. <laughs> <laughs> May I make a suggestion? Yep. This other YouTuber, they'll on another channel they play a Let's Play and then they use that footage from Let's Play to make a review out of it. Oh yeah, I, I, I've done that too. Yeah. Killing two birds with one stone, yeah. Yeah, that could that could work. That could work. I uh, gotta I gotta consider it again. Then you'll finally play through Wallace and Gromit with me. Sure. Or Sam and Max. Sure. Yay. Yeah, we gotta check on that, I guess, after the holidays. 
I got... The I holidays got, are holly. Yeah. Unless you want to record them, like, during the holidays. I'm not sure. I, I might be able to get on Skype, pos- possibly. I, what, I, I, I'm getting tired now. I can't oh. even speak. Oh, look, I'll, I'll listen to you sounding like a celebrity. Yes, I might be able to squeeze you in, possibly. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> no, you might have heard I said possibly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting really tired, so I suppose... Hey, hey, there's there's nothing wrong with being proud of your proposable thumbs. <laughs> okay, but uh, I, I guess we'll have to end this segment now, because we have still one more segment in this podcast that's going to come after this, which we recorded before, which is confusing. But hey, Sendu, any last words you want to say to the uh, listening audiences? Marowak your cube owners. All right, so get ready for the final segment after this. And welcome back to this White Devil Whatever cast with uh, Dorotka. And so we're getting close to the end of the podcast. There's just one last thing as the year is about to end. I wanted to ask <clears throat> Dorotka, so what are you planning to do this uh, this Christmas, this holiday on this holiday season? <laughs> Um, I'm just very basic. I'm gonna go to Hungary to my family, and we're gonna um, celebrate Christmas. And uh, it probably I'm gonna come back to Germany uh, to with some friends for New Year's Eve. I nice. might stay in Hungary. I'm not hundred percent sure, but most likely I'll be in Germany. I'm just celebrating, you know, very very standard stuff. You know, nothing too crazy. All right. Yeah. What about you? What about you? Uh, yeah, well, the tra- tradition that we have had a couple ha- had for a good few years now is that uh, we usually spend me and Mirna we spend the uh, Christmas at my um, mother's and then we go for to New Year's for my dad uh, for, for New Year's we go to our dad's and that's usually how it's been most years, uh, barring whenever like if my dad has plans on on New Year's Eve, uh, anything anything like that. So that's that's sort of what we're what I'm planning to do, except it's going to be interesting because uh, my sister Minna is actually going to be spending uh, Christmas with uh, with her um, uh, boyfriend or uh, her boyfriend's play, uh, parents' place. So it's going to be uh, just me, my me, my mom, and uh, uh, my grandfather. But I'm going to be seeing my relatives, all, pretty much all of my relatives, uh, during uh, the Christmas, uh, the holidays, and I don't know for New Year's quite yet what I'm going to be doing. I, I haven't been able. It's usually been a make a big deal about getting the fireworks and everything, but <laughs> I'm not sure I'm be able to do that this year. And also, I'm traveling by train, so all my Christmas presents have been bought uh, with that in mind that I have to lug them around <laughs> on the train. Right, right, right. <laughs> and I also, uh, another my. Uh, friend Ville is also moving just uh, as the New Year is coming around, so I'm going to be helping out with him on that. So, so that's, right. those are pretty much my plans. And then I will have videos, of course, uploading during this whole time. I've got I've got a big big chunk of videos just ready to go right now, including some broken sword. So, so that's that's uh, something to look forward to. <laughs> Gotta have broken sword, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I guess that's it. Thank you for joining us on this end of the year White Devil podcast. Thank you to Kaiser for being on, even though he's not here anymore. And thank you, Dorovka, for being on here again. You're welcome. Yeah, it was fun. And uh, I uh, I always enjoy talking to you. And uh, we should do this again. So, yeah, too bad Sandu couldn't make it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it was a very chilled and laid back one. I think that's works for the end of the year so thank yeah, you for inviting me yeah yeah i always always love having you here and also hopefully next year we'll be able to do white devil podcast a whole lot more because it's just been a kind of a crazy year today this year so we haven't been able to do it as much but thank you for listening as always i'm hunter the hunter mackinan see you on the next one Dorovka, any last words for the death punk of doom fellow beasties all right bye